Hello and welcome to 2021. As we kick off a new year with fresh optimism and a growing confidence, I just wanted to take a final look back at 12 traumatic months by paying tribute to some of the heroes we sadly lost. Heroes who will never be forgotten. Back in February, I joined hundreds of Manchester United fans from around the world at the annual Munich Memorial Service in Trudering. It was my first pilgrimage to the site of the 1958 air disaster. But never did I imagine that just a few days later, I'd be at the funeral of the brave and hugely modest hero of Munich. Harry Gregg was one of the greatest men to represent our football club, and one of the game's finest ever goalkeepers. First time I met uh, Matt Busby was with Jimmy Murphy when he came to Doncaster to sign me. I was a player and very quiet. Uh, the great Peter Doherty, the man that made me, left me with him and said, the, the boy is ready to sign. That clip comes from an exclusive interview I filmed with the great man for my upcoming documentary, We Will Never Die. The film will pay tribute to the fallen heroes who helped make MUFC the greatest football club the world has ever seen. As 2020 unfolded, the Red Devils who followed Harry to that football heaven in the sky grew longer than any of us could ever possibly have imagined. And six of the players we lost before Christmas all had one thing in common. They were all fighting a losing battle with dementia. In June, we lost Tony Dunn, a European Cup winner in 1968, and one of our greatest ever fullbacks, who played over 500 times for the Reds. But sadly, Dunny, just like all the other former players we've lost since, was suffering dementia in his final years. A month later, Alex Dawson was also gone. Of course, I was fortunate to score one of them against Burnley. That was all good <laughs> My afternoon spent with Alex and his wife Claire will always be a treasured memory. It was Alex's final filmed interview. But sadly, the Busby babe, dubbed the Black Prince, when he was moved on to Preston, was also cursed by dementia. Likewise, with our World and European Cup winner Nobby Stiles, whom we sadly lost at the end of October. Nobby's family have since won media support for their campaign to force football to accept responsibility for dementia. It's a fight we must all support, so please share this video and add your voice to the campaign to make football recognise dementia as an industrial injury. In November, we lost Albert Quicksall and Maurice Setters, both FA Cup winners with our team that beat Leicester City in the 1963 final. And like Dunn, Dawson and Stiles, both men were suffering with dementia. It was the same story with John Fitzpatrick, who was already struggling with Alzheimer's when we chatted in 2017. I think it was about nine of us played for the first team. Um, Georgie, myself, Willie Anderson came through to the first team, as I said. But we all know but who came out best, and that was Georgie Best. He was just absolutely fantastic. As a kid, he was just magnificent. That's another clip from an interview I'll be featuring in a future documentary. Fitzy sadly passed away four days before Christmas Day. So six of the seven players we lost in 2020 were suffering with dementia. A dreaded curse that's also plaguing our last remaining Munich survivor, Sir Bobby Charlton. To put the seal on a terrible year, on New Year's Eve we were given the sad news that former manager Tommy Doherty had passed away. The Doc was 92 years old, a larger than life character who was never afraid to ruffle feathers. He wasn't always loved by everyone, but the team he built in the 70s certainly was. For family, friends and fans alike, we're all deeply saddened by each and every loss. But none of these men who kept the red flag flying high will ever be forgotten. Because just like our football club, our memories will never die. We'll never die, we'll never die. We'll keep the red flag flying high. Because United will never die.